Uh, NIV, I believe. I got two. I got, uh, what, what's the problem up here on the banners? Yeah, I have the scriptures over there. If you have it, say amen. If you found it, say amen. That's why, don't ever depend on electronics, okay? Got to have your electronics and your Bible. All right, here we go. Let's read this together. Let's read this together. Need you to catch this. And then I'm going to kind of explain the backdrop of it. All right, here we go. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful. Well, Thirteen. Then your heart. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But, eighteen, watch this. Amen, 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 amen. Turn to your neighbor to the left or the right. Someone you did not come with. Someone you did not come with. Someone you did not come with. Maybe in front of you. Somebody in the front row turn around. And all I want you to do is say to them these two words. Say, remember God. Remember God. Amen, 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 amen. Now watch this. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Turn to someone else. Turn to someone else. Turn to someone else. Turn to someone else. Tell them, say, remember God. All right, turn around, face me. Turn around, face me. There's a lot of instruction this morning. Check this out. Now I want you to point to yourself. Point to yourself. Point to yourself. Point to yourself. Now I need you to say this louder than you said it the other two times, okay? Say, self. self. Remember, Remember. God. God. Now high five yourself. High five yourself. Take your seat in the name of Jesus. Remember God. Remember God, remember God, remember God, remember God. So, so there are four areas that we're going to talk about. Give, 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 give in the series. Give like you want to live spiritually, give physically, give financially, give uh, mentally slash emotionally, all right? That's the first little piece on your little sheet there. Give spiritually, financially, physically, emotionally, uh, mentally. Give, give like you want to live in those four areas, just like you want to live, like you want to live. And I'm pretty sure that if we did a survey, uh, no one would say, I want to live the worst life I can live. Although people live like that, like they want to live the worst life without God. But no one would say that. I'm pretty sure that everyone would say, I want to live the best life that God has in store for me or the best life I can live. Amen. So, so remember God. Remember God for God, for what God has done. That's what the text is saying. Some other things I'm going to show you. For what God is doing. Just like in the praise and worship. And what God will do. Watch this. Because we're, we're, we're dealing, Sister Reed, we're dealing with financially now. And, and, and what God will do financially in your life. We're being, we're being specific today. So each one of these sermons will, will be specific in that area because I am submitting to you that, that in order for us to live a life that God has in store for us, and I, I promise you, you don't, you, we, none of us can truly understand the magnitude of blessings that God has in store for us if we live 
or if we give like we want to live in those four areas. So today we're talking about finance. Okay? So so in the in the original in the original uh language in the Hebrew, the word uh remember is Zakar. Z A K A R. Remember. And it, it means this. So when 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 Moses makes his statement, remember God. Look, Israel. Remember God. This is what he this is what he's saying. Record in your mind what God has done. You know when you record it, you can play it back anytime you want to. It, it's recorded. It's in there. He's saying it's an it's a earnest recall. That's what this, this, this word means, Lisa. It causes one to invoke. Call on that which is etched, recorded in your mind. To appeal to as the authority. So what Moses is saying, remember the one that has authority authority over the earth and watch this make an appeal to that one you, you it's not about you you're not making an appeal to yourself you're not doing it what you are doing is you're going to make an appeal to the one that can ins- inspire you the only one that can really inspire you they tell your family members they tell you great they can help you out and do all that but the only one that really can inspire you the only one that can really support you the only one that can really help you remember God uh, so, 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 so he's saying, and, he, and he's specific because he's, he's saying, I don't want to get ahead of myself, that God is, God is going to bless you. God's blessing you, but he's really going to bless you. But you got to remember, because you can get caught up and think that you did it. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't you dare do that. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. If you really want a whooping from God, don't you dare. You, you know how it was when, when you were growing up, and some of you do it now because your mom and daddy did. Uh, when and it seems like uh, you didn't really appreciate what was happening. And you thought, you know, I'm, this, this is what should happen to me. I did this. I mean, I, I went to school. I got the degree. I did all this. But for who made sure you were taken care of when you went to school? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say fool. I said it too, didn't I? I meant to say it then because that's, that's, what, that's what we feel sometimes. But check this out. It's somewhat humorous when you start talking about money and giving in the church. All right, let me do this real quick. I was going to do this for offering time. All right. I'm going to condition you. Check this out. So when I say it's offering time and it's time to give, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just start screaming and hollering and shouting and clapping your hands, okay? For a reason. This is part of the sermon, y'all. This is part of the sermon. All right. It's offering time. It's giving time. It's time to give. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Now I can make this statement. So, so, I mean, it really, really, it's really predictable a lot of times in church universal, some churches, a lot of churches, uh, when, when a person starts to talk about giving, many listening start to feel uncomfortable sometimes. Money is one of those things that most people do not want to discuss. It's hard to get somebody to sit down with you and do, sit down with you and work out their budget and see where they are and all of that. I don't want to discuss that. Am I right about it? Somebody say amen. 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 I am. I am. And there are those who feel like talking about money is unspiritual and is worldly. There's some folks that think like that. Tithing is a spiritual concept. Watch this. Visitors, you came on a great Sunday. Because we're going to get it all out the way right now. You're going to understand what Dr. Stafford means and what he feels as it, as it relates to giving. Because that's one of the things, that's one of the big things that when you join the church that you really like, okay. And I'm going I'm to show you something. I'm going to show you why. Tithing is a spiritual concept that is often misunderstood and not taught properly. You will find teachings that are all over the place when it comes to the tithing off. And some people say that tithing is just an Old Testament principle that doesn't apply to us today in the New Covenant. And I'm going to show you something real quick down in the scripture when I get to that point. 
All right. And then on the other extreme, there are those that say God punishes people today who don't tithe. I'm going to show you where that's crazy, too. Understand, understand, understand. God doesn't have to do anything. God's already said that if you do this, this is what's going to happen. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. It's up to us. We punish ourselves. Okay, I'll show you. Watch it. There is a lot of ill will toward the discussion of money, giving tithes and offering in the church universal. A lot of ill will. Check this out. You probably won't hear over here a preacher say this, a pastor say this, but you're going to hear me. It is, it, is, it is sad to say. In many cases, it's warranted because there are many pastors, church leaders, and church officials that, watch this, that do get, new lip, new, watch this, try to manipulate. Y'all hear me? In the discussion. When it comes to giving, this is, this is real. And dealing with giving and giving tithes, offerings, church campaigns. You can't manipulate folks. Well, well, listen to this. Whenever this happens, it's obvious that the pastor or the church leaders are not teaching from a spiritual perspective, but more so from the flesh. Catch this. God never manipulates or controls anyone. Not even with their finances. Come on, say, remember God. God. You can't be manipulative. Remember God. Remember God. Watch this. Christians, believers, and churchgoers who feel uncomfortable with discussing money given and uh, the tithes in the church must set aside, if you feel comfortable talking about this, you must set aside much of what Jesus said during his earthly ministry. If you feel uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, I want to help you because you got to focus on this because it's, it's extremely important. In fact, Jesus had more to say about money, and I say this every time I talk about this. I only preach about giving uh, in, a, in a series probably once or twice a year. I do. Only once or twice a year because I understand uh, there, there are greater things that we need to discuss than just giving, okay? So check this out. Uh, Jesus, Jesus had more to say about money than he did about heaven and hell combined. That's how important it is. 11 of 39 parables of Jesus talks about money. One of every seven verses in the gospel of Luke talks about money. Jesus taught that a legitimate use of money, notice what I said, a legitimate use of money, is to support the Lord's work through the religious institutions the Lord establishes. So the reality is this. Money is critically important. Somebody say amen. Amen. One's attitude toward money, especially as a Christian, and how you manage it in God through Jesus Christ is a piece of the foundation that sets the stage for a big part of our spiritual lives. I want y'all to catch this. Watch this. In Deuteronomy 8, Moses urges Israel in our text to really check their attitude as it relates to the blessings and the wealth from God when they live a life of material abundance in the promised land. Because they're getting ready to go to the promised land and say, look, I I just know what's getting ready to happen. You're getting ready to get blessed and God is blessing you and he's kept you and all these things. But when you get there, you got to check your attitude. He wants them to always understand how important it is to acknowledge, remember, Zarkar. And honor God for blessing and wealth because it is God who makes it happen. Tell yourself, it's God who makes it happen. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many degrees you have. It's God that makes it happen. I want to say, remember God. Catch this, this is Mary Moore. Watch this. In so many words, Moses is saying, who gives wisdom, understanding, skill, body, bodily strength, and health? Is it not Jehovah? That's what he's saying to him. He says, and, and without these, how can wealth be acquired? Do, do y'all see that? Well, watch this. It says, wisdom, understanding, skill, bodily strength, and health. It's, it's God. So without those things, how can wealth be acquired? Ooh. Watch this. 
whose providence, this is what he said, gives caring provisions for his people as he guides them through their journey of faith, through life, accomplishing his purpose in and through them. Who gives fertility to the earth? And who brings every proper purpose to a right issue? Is it not God? And without all these things, can wealth be acquired? No. Therefore, I submit. The proposition in the text is self-evident. It is God that gives power to get wealth. And to God, every person, watch this, is responsible and accountable for remembering who has, ulti- who has the ultimate power to allow it. Well, and will allow it to happen. Well, and is allowing it to happen. Somebody say, remember, remember God. Tell yourself real loud, remember God. For he's the one that gives the ability to get well. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care. What, you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to be smart. You, don't have, you just got to trust the Lord. Watch this. Watch this. Be obedient to God. Listen to God. And the Holy Spirit will give you and tell you everything you need to know. I wish I had some believers in the place. Check this out. So in my sermon series, uh, these are the three uh, sermon observations that, that are the foundation over the whole sermon, over the whole series, all four uh, all four uh, sermons, the sermon uh, observations are these things. Uh, remember, God, did y'all get that for what God has done? I hope y'all filled that out. That was on your sheet. So sermon observation, here it is. Christ purchased you not only by virtue of his paying a price, but also your willing surrender to him. Again, this series is entitled Give Like You Want to Live. So your willing surrender to him. These sermons are the, I mean, these observations are the foundational piece because in every sermon, the preacher must try to move you into a direction. These are the three directions that you got to move into. These are the three things that you truly got to understand and know in order for this to take place in your life. Check out number two. God is intentional and calls you to be intentional. He's deliberate. Watch this. He does things on purpose. He calls us, calls us to what? Be deliberate and do things on purpose. That's one of the major issues in in Christendom and in the life of believers that are expecting God to move them to a whole different level, to bless them on a whole different level, is we're not intentional enough and we don't do things on purpose. Catch this. Look at the last one. Give like you want to live creates favor, victory, and power. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what it does. I'll just give you a little snip. When we talk about physical, I can use, just use this one scripture for the whole thing. It says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the least you can do. If you do that, guess what? It's going to create favor, victory, and power. I promise you. I guarantee you. Without a shadow of doubt. And the younger you are, to get this, the better off you will be in your life. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, remember God. Help me, Dr. Stafford. Help me, Dr. Stafford. Help me, Dr. Stafford. Help me, Dr. Stafford. Okay, help me Jesus help them in the name of Jesus. Here we go. Check this out. We got two things I want to show you real quick. The first thing in this whole uh, series and, and focusing on give like you want to live financially. Watch this. First thing I want to show you is this. And, and just allow you to just uh, reflect on the text. First thing is this. God doesn't need you. You need God. Okay, let me help you out so you don't think I'm just talking to you. God doesn't need us. Us need God. <laughs> Y'all catch that? Ooh. I, I just, man, check this out. We desperately, I said this in a series, a couple of series ago, we desperately need God. Here's where the intentionality comes in. Every day of our life, we got to be intentional in letting God know that we desperately need God. 
more importantly, we got to be more intentional in letting ourselves know that we desperately need God. See, God already knows that we desperately need him, but we need to let him know so, we know, so he'll know. And we'll, 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 watch this, we'll position ourselves for the blessings because when God says, when, when we say, God, we desperately need you, that means we erase all of our understanding, all of our stuff out the way, and we just let the Lord use us. And then God can come in and the Holy Spirit can come in and do exactly what it is supposed to do. I don't think we do a great job in teaching about God doesn't need us. We need God. God, God watch it. Don't ever, don't ever join church. Talk to the visitors now. Don't ever join church thinking you coming to church to help the church. I just want to throw that at you, but now I'm really going to talk to these members. <laughs> Don't you dare get up above yourself and act like somebody that God needs you. Because God will quickly show you. And he doesn't, again, I'm, I'm, I, I, use that, I use that lightly because God does not, it's not, it's not, he's not a puppet master. He's not going to come down and say, okay, you want to do this? He's already put in an atmosphere. He's already said, if you don't do it, you remember what I said, right? So if you, if you have the mentality that you're doing God a favor, hmm, get it out your spirit. Matter of fact, we should be trying to do extra in our lives for God in order to, watch this, suppress the carnality that is in us. To get that stuff out of us. To get self, we are born selfish people. We are born thinking we know stuff. We are born thinking we got it going on. But you really don't tell your neighbor. You don't really have it going on. Tell them, just tell them. Don't tell the person you came with. Don't tell them that. Don't tell that person you came with. Tell somebody else. Do not tell your wife. She, she, she don't really have it. Do not tell her that. Because she understand right now she in the service, but she going to bring it up a little later. And let me, let me remind you, I do have it going on. <laughs> Talking about husbands and wives, all right? That's why you be rolling over trying to touch me. I said husband and wives. Y'all heard me, right? You heard me real good, okay? So, 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 again, 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 God doesn't need us. We need God. Watch this. The reality is this. God doesn't need anything from you or me. Our life depends on God. We need everything from God. Oh, boy, 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 you hear it all the time in the church. Everything belongs to God. Scripture, I think it's in there, 24, Psalms 24, 1 and 3, 1 and 3, 1 and 3. Write it down, fill out your notes. The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. Y'all hear me quote this all the time if you're familiar. Uh, you come to the church, the world and all those that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? No one, because everything belongs to God. We got to condition our minds. This is not something that you just wake up to do. Remember, God is spirit. We must worship him in spirit and truth. That means the more you worship God, the more you grow spiritually. Remember, I told you spiritual growth is coming. The more you grow spiritually, the more you start thinking like this and living like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? That everything belongs to God. The way I think now, and I was a Christian 10 years ago or 12 years ago and I was a Christian, is not how I thought then. But as I grew spiritually, Sister Terry Little, as I grew spiritually, check this out. God started to expand my territory of my mental. We're going to talk about that in our, my emotions. I start to understand and look at things differently because now my spirit man is connecting with God, which is the spirit. So when my spirit man connects with God, I start looking at life totally different. I hope that makes some sense to somebody. That's why spiritual growth is so important. Oh, yeah, you better, you, you better hear me. And that's why you can't think that you are doing God a favor. That's why Jesus says, I leave a comforter with you who will teach you all things, bring everything to your remembrance. Recall, invoke, remember God, so you'll understand. Check it out. All right, just. Yes, everything belongs to God, and God does not need one cent, one cent from us. He don't need anything from us. Tell your neighbor, God doesn't need one cent from you. God don't need a penny. He don't need anything. Yet God challenges you and I as believers to be faithful in giving of our tithes and offerings. Tied, meaning a tenth. May assure, meaning a tenth. And when and whatever you give, do it with the correct attitude. Amen. 
That's why from this day forward, we're going to get back to when we have offering time, folks screaming, hollering, and shouting. Even if you don't feel it, even if you feel bad, just do it anyhow. <laughs> Speak those things that are not. So when you're speaking things, you're doing those things that are not as though they, they were. It's a spiritual memory. It's like muscle memory, but it's a spiritual memory. And you'll start appreciating and, 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 and really being grateful. And I just believe that when we give as cheerfully, God starts to open up some stuff. I wish I had some. Man, I, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I get it. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says this. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says each one of us must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Malachi 3.10 and A says bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in your house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? Matthew 23 and 20, uh, 23 says, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe. Now, watch this. You remember they said that tithe is really not spoken of in the New Testament, but this is Jesus telling them that, look, you, 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 you tithing. You're doing all that stuff. But watch this. Even the tiniest income from your herbs and gardens. But you ignore the most important aspects of the law, justice and mercy and faith. You should tithe. Look, look, look. I said, no, no, no. So, so Jesus is talking about this, but, but, but because, watch this, because uh, I'm going to exegete this properly so you can truly understand. The reason why it's not spoken of in the New Testament, watch this, because more weight should have been placed on Jesus as a Savior than money as a tithe. So that's why Jesus has problems. He says, yeah, you go ahead and tithe, tithe, you tithe. But the thing about it, you need to place more weight on your faith and living right. You, you should tithe. But it's not more important than you growing spiritually and living right. Because there are a lot of folk that are tired are going to bust hell wide open. I know, I know y'all never heard a preacher say that, a pastor say that, or anything like that. But I'm telling you, because it's, it's not about what you give. It's about your heart. Because when you're tired, I say this all the time, you're giving out of faith and obedience. You're not giving. But, oh, watch, watch this. Check this out. Check this out. Check. Let, me, let me move a little forward. You see the text and you see the scriptures. So, so, so at the end of the day, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. God doesn't need us. We need God. And get this in your spirit. When God sets something up, it's not because he needs something. It's because God is God. You don't need anything when he sets something up. He loves you and God wants to bless you. God wants you to be blessed. That's why the familiar scriptures say, he wants you to be blessed. Delight yourself in the Lord. Why? He'll give you the desires of your heart. You can't get the desires without delighting yourself in the Lord. Being excited about God, being excited about working for God, being excited about being a believer, being excited about spreading the word of God, being excited that God just saved you, being excited that he delivered you from all your iniquities, all your crazy stuff, being excited that you're not perfect but God still gives you grace and mercy, being excited because he's turned your life around. The old church said he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet, what? On s oh, y'all better shut up talking to me. Just be excited. He wants to bless us. That's why we quote the scripture all the time, Blake. Bro, bro, we quote it all the time. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, we say it all the time. For I know the plans I have for you. That's what we say. Declares the Lord, plans the welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. He wants to bless us. Stop letting the enemy play tricks on your mind as it relates to money and finances. I'm going to show you something. You better catch it. Real simple. God wants to bless you. He wants you to be blessed. Because you are a direct representative of God, of heaven. And the whole objective is to save souls. I don't know if I should say this, Sister Johnson, Beth. But I'm going to say it. Nobody want to follow broke folk. Who wants to worship a broke God? Oh, see, y'all, y'all, see now, now. Oh, it's all in the Bible. If you don't believe me, you, you search the Bible and look at the blessings for being obedient. The reason why folk were so excited about Jesus, because Jesus was doing stuff nobody else did. That's why they followed. That's why, watch this, no cell phones, no automobiles, no cars, none of that stuff. But all of a sudden, 5,000 folk came down to the river that was 30, 40 miles away. Why? Because this man was healing folk. He was giving sight to the blind. He was giving hope. Oh, do y'all hear what I'm saying? 
So, so watch this. Jesus says, can I give you some more Bibles? Even greater things you'll do than I, oh boy, I've done. Because he understands the magnitude of the challenge that you are faced with when it comes to sin and converting and helping people. I hope y'all catching this. Somebody say, teach, bless me, doc. Bless me, doc. God doesn't need us. We need God. Let me hunk this off. Let me hunk this off. Let me hunk. You're, you're giving the tithes and offering. It's not about money. All right, here we go. Your giving is not about money. Tell somebody it's not about money. Tell them, tell them. Your little ears perked up. Not about money. Oh, I'm in the right church. You are, you are, but slow your roll, player. Slow your roll. It, it's, not, it's not about money. Catch this. The money is the object. Y'all know object. A thing to which a specified action, attitude, or feeling is directed. The money is the object. Ah, let me get some. One of my graduates, uh, uh, two of my graduate, high school graduates. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Y'all hurry up. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I did this before. Hurry up. Hurry up. Y'all help him up the stage. Help, help, help. He's going to Yeah, let him help. Hurry up. You get out the way, Lamey. Let me see if he's going to do this. Get out the way, Lamey. I just said let him help her. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. All right, here we go. Check this out. I want, I want to do this illustration because it's not about the, mo- it's not about the money. Watch this. So I got some ones, okay, because it makes it easier. Because some folk, when it comes to tithing, they forget how to do math. They forget what 10% is. <laughs> is it 1% before the net or the gross? So, so I got some ones. All right. Got some ones. All right. That's one for you. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to be God. That's one for you. That's one for you. So you got 30 ones, you have 20 ones. God, it's not about money. God doesn't need our money. It, it's not. Watch this. Let me show you. I did this before. I hope y'all remember. Some of y'all probably don't remember. Watch this. All right, so time is 10%. So you have 30 ones, all right? I want you to give me 10% of the 30 ones, which is three. Go ahead and give me three. <laughs> this is a lesson. This is real talk right here. That's why we do this. Check this out. Now, you have 20 ones, so give me 10%. All right. And you gave me three, 30. That one stuck to it. All right. So check this out. The 20 and the 30 belong to God anyhow. So why does God want something that already belongs to him? It's not about the money. Ooh. Oh, if y'all catching this. Why, why does God want something that already belongs to him? Because it's not about the money. Check it out. That's your 20. Thank y'all. That's all. Take that money. Y'all good. Hey, uh, go get you something to eat today, okay? That's your money. My fact here, I'm going to make it even. One, two, three, four, five. That's five for you. That's 25, 25. Get y'all something to eat. I'm looking at him saying, he looking, I'm looking, he looking down at me, yeah, at $20. That's my snack. <laughs> All right, let me hunk this off real quick, y'all. It's four things, four things, four things that it's all about. These are four things. Y'all got to get this. I promise you I'm done at this. I promise you. Watch this. I, I, there's four things. You have to get this. It's, I just showed you it's not about the money. So stop tripping and thinking it's about the money. It's not about the money. The Bible says the love of money is, uh, is what? And it really says much evil or a lot of evil, okay? But all that evil... That much evil, a lot of evil, is, is intentional by the enemy, so it don't have to be all because he knows exactly how he can get you. Y- y- y'all catch it? So, so that's why you can't trip off of this. You truly got to understand, it's not, it's not about the money for God. God's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. He already owns everything. So check this. This is the four things it's about. Uh, give me that next slide. Give me the next slide. These are four things. Hurry up, y'all. Hurry up. Four things. Honor, trust, stewardship, and promises. 
It's all about you honoring God, you trusting God, you being a good steward of what God has given you, and God's promises in your life. So that's what it's about. It's not about anything else. Please believe me. It's about honoring God, the, the, the value you place on something or someone. Honoring God. That's the values. So it's shown in your giving because he really doesn't need it. It's just a formality. I, would, I say this all the time. You know, a lot of y'all have heard me say this. I would rather trust, watch this, God with my 90% than trust myself with 100%. That's what this is about. I hope y'all catching this. Look, honor the value you place on something. That's the scripture. Write it on your little notes. I want you to take that back with you and study it. Trust. Total confidence in. Not partial confidence, but total confidence. Oh, no, this is real, real talk. Total confidence. I remember, I remember uh, uh, Minister K.J. Keith Gray. I always remember this. It's a great illustration that, that, that uh, uh, he, would, he said, you know what, uh, and this was, I, believe, I, pr I promise you, this was probably the turning point in your life, in your giving, in your financial life. And you always remember that because God, God is never going to forget that. <laughs> That's what turned the corner for you. So, so the whole NFL thing and all this stuff was, 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 was working, and, but not like he wanted to work or whatever. And I, I remember, and I don't know the specifics, but I think it was $5,000 or something, and then you were down to something, your last, and your 10%, and you said, I'm just going to tie whatever I got to tie, and I, whatever's due is due. I'm just going to trust you. And then if you hear his story and his testimony, you'll see what God has done. <laughs> this is real talk. But, but understand this. The problem in Christendom is that we think we have trust, but we really don't have trust. It says total confidence in. Meaning there are going to be times where, where, where there are going to be times initially when, when you're trying to get past that certain point of giving in your life, where you're going to have to trust God, it's going to look a little shaky, a little tight, but you still got to give because it's not about the money. It's about you showing God, I trust you, God, and you can trust me. So the big part is more so God now trusting you to do exactly what he has commanded you to do, be obedient. Amen, amen, amen. Not for yourself, but for others. You understand? It's, it's not a simple, I mean, it's not a difficult, difficult thing to understand. Check out the next thing, stewards, stewards. All we do with the resource that God put us in care of, a good steward. You have to be a good steward. What God blesses you with, faithful over a few things. Make you ruler over many. I mean, few things. I don't care what it is. You were excited about the car, now you don't even keep the car clean. Oh, see, y'all tripping with your boy. That's part of it. Y'all laughing and all that stuff. When you got it, you flipped over the mat, said, don't put your feet on my mats. Don't eat in my car. Now you eat McDonald's and everything else in your car. God bless you with it. Do you, did you see what Moses is telling the children of Israel? Don't get this twisted. God bless you. When God blesses you with something, you got to look at it differently. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I hope y'all catching this. You can't, look, that's everything. You got to show God, God, I'm a good steward. That's why Genesis 1:28 says, look, he's given us stewardship over the whole earth. Everything on the earth belongs to us through God. We have dominion over it. Understand it. If that's the case, you have to be a good steward of it. Good steward of your time. God bless my business, but you sleep half the time. You're watching TV all the time. What you doing? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You're not putting that extra grind in it. Somebody say, I got to grind, I got to grind. You got to put some grind in it. This thing is not just about, oh, God, I tithe in the name of Jesus. Open the windows of heaven and bless me, Lord. No, where's your grind? Where's your stewardship that I bless you with? Say our last thing, promises, divine. Divine, God's promises, divine, rock solid. If he said it, I got any old school church folk in here? If he said it that, he said, I bless you going in, bless you going out, guess what? Guess what's going to happen when you're grinding for Jesus? He's going to bless you going in, bless you coming. And you're going to have some times where, watch this, you're going to have some times where your little faith is a little shaky, your little trust is a little shaky. You crying, oh, Lord, why you ain't listening to me? But the more you grow spiritually, the more God starts to slice that. And you start understanding. And watch this. The more you grow, you're just like Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. God, uh, you know, uh, I got to do this, but if there's any, any way that I cannot do this, 
but not my will, let your will be done for me. That's what's going to happen. Yo, as you grow spiritually, that's what starts. The issue is we got too many baby Christians in church. When I say baby, I mean they're still immature. I ain't talking about y'all because y'all buff. Y'all good. You buff spiritually. Watch this. I'm talking about immature folk that are not growing spiritually so they can never tap into ex- the, the, the knowledge that God needs them to tap into because my people perish. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. Rock solid. Check this out. Let me give you this last thing. Last thing. Last thing. Last thing. Last point. Watch this. Come on, y'all. Pull this out for me. Pull this out for me. Pull that out for me. Last point. Check this out. Check this out. The text says, the text says, this is what, this is what Moses is telling people. Last point. This is it. He says, he says, uh, look, look at, uh, make sure I get it. Look at when he, when he goes down to the end, he says, if, 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 if you do all this, you know, remember, you think you're doing enough, but it's God that's doing all of this. God, God is the one that's going to bless you with every area of your life. What he's saying, Sister Tammy, he said, it's all covered. It's, it's all covered. Check this out. You got full coverage. You ain't rolling around here with liability. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's all. Stop worrying. It's, it's all covered. The only thing you need to worry about is that you're lining up in your giving and doing the things that God wants you to do. I'm talking about giving now. I ain't not talking about anything else, so don't, don't get it twisted. I'm talking about giving. Your 10% giving. And then sometimes giving offering. I try to give an offering every Sunday because I'm always trying to carry around cash, so I'm putting an offering in it. That's why you see me holding up the phone, cash out, and then holding up an offering, old school. <laughs> My spiritual father told me this a long time ago. He said, check this out, man. You need to make sure you got cash all around the house because if the banks go out, <laughs> something happens. But y'all, do y'all hear what I'm saying? So I try to take a Chris $100 bill every week and put it somewhere. <laughs> and tell no one. <laughs> Tashi saw, saw me one day because I was like, man, I don't want to spend any money. I don't want to use my debit card to do any of that. So I said, okay, let me go to my secret hideout. Let me get, <laughs> let me get about three of them blue notes. <laughs> put them in my little money clip, folded it up. Oh, you rolling with $100 bills, huh? I said, shoot, I should have broke that 100 before I see some. That's part of it. Do you understand stewardship? Listen to me. Watch this. It's all covered. It's all covered. You know why I can say it's all covered real quick? The last little piece in your little notes right there, and I'm done. Watch this. This is why I can say it's all covered, because Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, the Amplified Version says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your crops, your income, and your barns. Then your, then your barns will abundantly be filled, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Do y'all understand what this is saying right here? As you honor, remember we said honor God. As you honor God, watch this. That means when you honor God that you are a cheerful person. There's some spiritual stuff that's already happening. You can't honor God without growing spiritual. I promise you it's going to be a roller coaster honor. It's going to be an off and on run. But when you really start growing spiritually and you just in your mind and it's solid in your mind, you remember God, you start honoring God. And you're cheerful. You don't care. You understand that, you know what, God, you got this. Everything belongs to you. If it, if it happens, if it doesn't happen, it's because you don't want it to happen. Watch this, Luke 6, 38, one of my prayer scriptures. It says, give and it will be given unto you. This is the universal principle of sowing and reaping. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, we pour it into your lap. That's what it basically means. <laughs> Whatever measure you meet, we measure back to you. Just real talk. Real talk. You're covered. And then that, that, that takes us, watch this. I'll give you this last little piece. This is what you got to have. I teach this. This is it. We close with this because it's related to the Malachi text. Understand this. Jesus talked about tithes. Not yet. Jesus talked about tithes. Jesus talked about tithes. Watch this. Jesus talked about tithes in the New Testament. 
in the Old Testament, a lot of people are saying, well, it's under the, under the law. It's not under the law because you do your research, and I teach this, and I taught this before. Melchizedek, Abraham, ties to Melchizedek before anything, any laws are coming out about Malachi. This is real talk. So here in Malachi, the reason why, and I want you to understand this, the reason why I say it's cursed with a curse is because these dudes that, that said that we're priests and all this was taking all the stuff. So they were being obedient. So the curse really wasn't because of your tithing, because tithing was just the object. Ooh, I hope y'all catching this. The curse was because of your lack of honor. I'm going to deal with you. Your lack of trust. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what, that, that, look at the text. That's exactly in, in Deuteronomy 8. That, that's exactly what Moses is telling the folk. Be careful, because it has nothing to do with the money. It has everything to do with your faithfulness. Your obedience to me, it's just an object. It's just part of the equation. That's why it's so easy to say that it's all, all covered. Now watch this. There's seven eye wheels in Malachi. When I researched this and I, and, and, I, and I studied something Bishop Jake had put out there, he talked about five, and I looked at this, and I looked at it carefully. I was like, oh, boy, there's seven eye wheels in here. This is what you got to remember. That, that, that's why I can say you're covered. Your business is covered. Your desires are covered. Everything is covered. I promise you. And then as you grow spiritually, you'll start learning how to plant seeds of giving when you're asking God to do something bountiful that is associated with finances in your life. You'll start planting seeds of giving. That happened to me. I did it for the very first time years ago. And, I, boy, I was struggling. I was struggling when God told me to do it. I was like, man, you sure? And we planted the seed. And I know it worked because that's when spiritually I started understanding this concept totally different that it's not about money. It's about the honor, the trust, the stewardship, and your promises, God. That's what it's about. It's not about the money. Don't, get to it. don't let Satan get you all confused. It's not. It's not. I don't need anything from you, God says. I'm trying to get something to you. That's why it's covered. So look at the eye wheels. I will open up the windows. This is what it says. You follow Malachi. I will open up the windows of heaven. Number two, I will pour you out blessings. Pour. Uh-huh. I will overflow you. That's what he says. I will prevent the devourer from destroying your blessings. That's why you got to continually pray. And if something happens and you know you've been faithful, you know, God, I'm a giver, I'm faithful, and I'm praying and I'm, I'm, I'm growing, I'm trying to do the right thing, and something comes that distracts or a devourer comes and something breaks down or something happens, don't trip off of that. That's part of it. Because now you got to try, okay, God, I desperately need you. I trust you, Lord. If it looks like your business is slowed down and your business is not jumping off, look, you just keep on saying, God, you got this in the name of Jesus. Because you got to understand, this is a spiritual battle. There's some things in your life, I say this all the time, that God is trying to get off of you. He's trying to transform you. We are renewed, what was this, by the transforming of our mind. He's trying to give us a whole different perspective, a whole different faith level, a whole different understanding, a whole different knowledge base, a whole different uh, wisdom. Watch this. So sometimes God allows you to go through situations that you really got to trust him. And you're just thinking in your mind, when is this going to be over? Yes, you're going to think of that, but you got to keep on praying. God, give me patience and go through it because God, I know you will rebuke the devourer. It looks like the devourer is getting the best of you. But at the end of the day, because it's all covered, guess what? The devourer is all around you. It appears that it, but God is using that situation, watch this, to grow you and take you to the next level because he's about to unload a blessing on you that you can't even fathom. And guess what? Your mind has to be right. Your spirit has to be right. You got, it's, it's all covered. I know, watch this, watch this. I know, I know it doesn't look like that because, watch this, you can still see. Watch this. Come, come here, come here, come here. I can, can, no, no, right here. Come over the stairs. Come over the stairs. Let me hold you. I ain't got that type of insurance. Right. No, no, you stay out there. I can still see the enemy. I can still see the situation. But the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why honor and trust is it. He wants you to see it because he has to get you to a position where you totally trust him because he has a greater purpose for you. He has greater blessings for you. Oh, you better catch this. That's why Moses is telling the Israelites, he said, look, don't trip. He's getting ready to take you over to the land with milk and honey. And you're about to be blessed bountifully. You're getting ready to see God in a whole different light, but don't think you did it. So when circumstances rise, don't worry about it because it's all covered. 
the, the issue is you have to stay under the covering because once you get out, guess what? Grab me, grab me, grab me. He can grab you. And now you're up to God in the name of Jesus. And he eventually has to let you go. And you're like, all right, I got to get this right. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I need to get it right. You got to stay faithful. I hope y'all catching this. I'm done. You got to understand this. Don't you let the enemy trick you. Don't you focus. You need to start praying every day. God, take my mind off of money. Someone says, my mind is on money. Old school said it out loud too. Money on my mind. <laughs> Old school. He, he popped that real quick. Quicker than any scripture. Mind on my money and my money on my mind. That's it good. Lay back. Oh, oh, you put the you put the remix in there. Check this out. Yeah, this is real talk. Check this out. Listen, listen, listen. My mind is on God and God is on my mind. Because God doesn't need us. God controls everything. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't worry about it. Some of y'all want business to pop off. And it is going to pop off. But you got to stay under the covenant. You got to do the things that God is commanding you to do because when he gives it to you, it's not for you. Oh, you're going to reap a lot of it. If you don't believe me, you go in the Old Testament when they were, they were storing up their tithes and storing up their tithes, storing up their tithes. Watch it. I mean, they were giving tithes, giving tithes, and extra was storing up, storing up. They were living not off, not off the, 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 the produce. They living off the little extra. Oh, it, it's, it's yours. Because at the end of the day, God wants people to see the power of God. He wants them to see that you were just nothing. You had nothing. But you trusted God. So they can ask the question, how in the world did you get there? Somebody say, remember God. But God. You can go back down. I'm done. So look, look, listen, it's all about the covering. It's not about anything else. You, you're covered. If you're faithful and it seems like things are not going right, don't worry. Don't, man, listen to me. Your prayer should be, your prayer should be, God, in the name of Jesus, just give me the strength to battle through this season. This wilderness. Because I know, I know it's all covered. And then, then attach this. Watch this. This is what you got to attach. You got to say, okay, God, because this is what Jesus says. This is what Jesus says. And the Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance, teach you things and bring things to your memory. Now you got to say, okay, God, what is it? What is it? What is it in this that I need to see? Is there anything I need to see? Anything I need to do different? Anything that I'm not being a good steward over? I mean, really, check this out. This is real talk. Just here recently, just here recently, I started thinking about, okay, I need to do this a little differently. I got to be a little more intentional and purposeful on this as it relates to money and finance. I mean, really. So when things start to, when things go upside down or start to happen, not upside down, just happen. All of, all of a sudden, everything starts to happen in your life. Man, financially, it's just, boy, I got to spend this. I got to do 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 this. Or this happened or this happened. It's not about the money. It's about your trust in God because you're already a believer. God's already going to bless you. He's already going to take care of you. So now you got to say, okay, God, what is it that I need to see in this season? What is it that I need to do differently? Because I know, I know that my breakthrough is about to come. So I want to make, make sure that I'm under the covering because it's all covered. I want to make sure that I'm a good steward. I want to make sure that I'm honoring you. I want to make sure I'm trusting you, God, because I know that you're going to release your promises on my life. So I'm challenging each and one, every one of us to take a deep look within yourself financially. Start budgeting. Sit down, husband and wife, sit down. Make it work for you. Start budgeting. Stop, stop being anxious for stuff. That could be the reason why it's not popping off for you right now. Excuse my vernacular. That could be the reason why it's not happening. Start looking at this thing closely. Make sure that you're a giver. Make sure you're 10%. Tie the tie. Get your budget together. Get that together. It's not about the money. It's about the honor of God. Because it's God that's going to do it for you. It's 
Oh, you got to remember God. Oh, his bow, all eyes closed. Eternal God, we thank you right now. We praise and magnify your name, God. Thank you, God, for what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word, God. This is an in-season word. I-R-L, in real life word, God. And we thank you. People are struggling financially because they just may lack the knowledge and what you are saying for us to do and how we should operate and how we should be good stewards. So God, we thank you for planting seeds in us right now. And God, I speak over everyone that's in this place right now. I speak generational wealth as they walk in your will and in your way. I bind every trick of the enemy that's trying to distract them, discourage them, derail them or detour them. I cancel it out right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, give them the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding because this is a serious issue. It's a serious issue. People are divorced for financial sickness. People are depressed, stressing out. So God, I cancel all of those spirits out. I speak over everyone in this place, every, everyone that's attached to someone, anyone that's watching, God. That God, you continue to give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as it relates to their finances, as it relates to honoring you, trusting you, God, being a good steward, God. Oh God, as it relates to your promises. And God, I speak generational wealth. I speak overflow. I speak blessings. I speak favor over everyone that's assembled in this place today, God. Everyone that may watch this, God, as a recording, I speak it over their lives, God. Oh, God, those that are in need of jobs, God, it seems like everything is upside down. Nothing is working out in their favor, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, give them that perfect job that they can appreciate even a year later, two years later, God, that they can still be thankful, God. Oh, God, and grateful for it, God. Give them that job, that release, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we speak your blessing, speak your favor, and we thank you. For it is in the master, this mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everyone in this place say, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, everyone stand, please. Listen, I don't want you to hesitate. We're going to make clothes. I want to do this for you. Business owners, those designed to have business, family, that you want to get this right. You want to create generational wealth. Listen to me. But when you come, I want you to really acknowledge that, God, it's not, it's not just for me. It's not for me primarily. It's for you, God, that I can be a bigger blessing. And you got to understand that you, you, it's already going to bless you. So if, if, if you know, and you may be at a level now and you just believe in God to take you to a whole different level. Everything may be good, but your desire is that this thing goes to a whole different level in the name of Jesus. If I'm speaking to you in any of those areas, just rush the, rush the altar real quick, come on, so we can give this prayer. I want to speak over your lives right now. I just believe that God, God is a keeper of his promises. I, I truly do. And I think we, I just believe and I submit to you that we really need to focus, focus more on. Operating. And understanding our finances God's way. Y'all hear me? When, when the Bible says this, check this out. When the Bible says, it's kind of paraphrased, that he stores up the wealth. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the right. Spirit, you are welcome. 
That doesn't mean that you're just going to take their stuff. That doesn't mean that. It means now you got to understand how to get what God has promised you. Because their stuff, eventually, there's a whole lot of stuff that's attached to wicked wealth. So don't ever look at folk and say, I wish I had what they had or what they got it going on. Don't ever do that. Because see, you don't all know all the other spiritual strongholds that are attached to that. The family members and generational stuff that is attached to that. You want it the way God gives it to you. Because when God gives it to you, guess what? Nobody can take it from you. They can't. So listen to me. Check this out. This, I'm not trying to tickle your fancy. I'm not trying to manipulate you. This is Bible. Everything you heard me say was scripture. Everything is Bible. I need you to truly understand the magnitude of your blessings, your favor, your power, your position as a believer in God through Jesus Christ. It's not taught enough in churches. It's not people are not challenged and, and get a deeper understanding of how important this is. This is real talk. You don't have to worry about anything. All you got to do is just keep going spiritually because you're going to have those down moments. Where it seems like, man, this ain't working out yet. This ain't working out. What's going on? Or, or I, man, it was moving. It was tra the, the trajectory was here. And then all of a sudden, it plateaued out. You're like, whoa, whoa. You're going to have them down moments. It doesn't matter. That's them trusting moments. So all you got to do is tell yourself, that's a trusting moment. This is a trusting season right here, God. So I'm just going to have to trust you. You got to help me now, God. Help me in the name of Jesus because you know I'm going to be tripping tomorrow. Today I'm feeling all right, but tomorrow I may be tripping. So God, help me in my tripping season. That's why I didn't sit here and I use it all the time. When he said, Jesus said, do you think I can do this? He said, yes. He says, but help my unbelief because I know tomorrow I'm here with you now and I see you and everything is good. I feel the spirit. I feel the movement and all that good stuff. But tomorrow and the next day, man, when I'm alone and safe, say, I told you that stuff don't work. That bridge out with that, 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 that. Guess what? You'll be like, oh, Lord. Here we go. So this is what I need you to do. This is all I want you to do. I want you to think about in, that, in your mind exactly what you're asking God to do in your finances, all right? You hear me? And I need, I need you to speak it out. So I'm going to do this quick prayer. You're going to wait, uh, uh, lift your hands up. Where two or three are gathered in my name, touching the grin. He says, I'm in the midst. God is in the midst. So I just want you to just speak it out in your mind and your voice. Whatever it is, just speak it out to God. Whatever it is you want him to do. And we're going to touch and agree right now. All of us are going to touch and agree. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lady Tasha. Where's Lady Tasha? Come here, Lady Tasha. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. I need you right at the foot of the stairs. I need you right at the foot of the stairs. Right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Right. So I need you to call out. Uh, you, you, you call out the business. Call out uh, complete home health. Call that out. Lift your hands up. I, I know that's what you were thinking, but I need you right in front. This is a business that, that I just believe God is going to do something miraculous for the Stafford family. This, I'm not just telling you all this stuff. This is real. I'm, I, I, we're all in this together. Because, watch this. God is going, watch this, if, if, when God does this, he can trust us and he knows we're going to bless the kingdom. And that's what he wants to do. So I'm challenging, I'm daring you just to believe a little bit. I'm daring you to believe and watch and see what he does. But you got to line up with everything else that we're talking. Here we go. Let's lift it up, lift it up. Speak it in the atmosphere, eternal God, as we lift up our hands, God. Oh God, we don't need a long prayer because we know you, God, all by yourself. God, right now we thank you in advance in the name of Jesus for what you are about to do. Oh, God, we thank you for where we are right now, what you've already done. Oh, God, we're just believing for our next level, God. We're believing that the bottom is going to fall out of business. The bottom is going to fall out of desires and hopes, God, and wishes, God. We speak financial blessings like never before to cover our lives as we touch and agree, God, that you are the true and living God. You, only you can do it, God, and without you, it can't be done. So we believe it. We touch and agree on business, on finances, and and families, God, generational wealth, God, just budgeting, being a great steward. Oh, God, being a consistent giver, a consistent tither, God. We speak it right now, God. Your blessings blow our mind in the message name of Jesus. We know it's done. Everyone in the building, everyone at the altar, repeat after me. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me in Jesus' name. Don't leave, don't leave. Lift your hands up. Watch this. Satan. Watch this. Satan, you're a liar. Oh, boy. You're a liar. You cannot have to tear my financial territory. I'm already covered in the name of Jesus. I decree it. 
I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. I speak overflow. I speak overflow. I speak blessing. Your goodness. Let us become overwhelmed with your presence. Let us experience the power of your goodness. Let Watch this. We're done. Check this out. This is what I need you to do. You, you listen. I need you to do two things. As God blesses you, I need you to always pay it forward. Always had it in your mind. Because that's going to be your witness and your testimony. And folk are going to be won over as he blesses you. That's it. The second thing I need you to do is when God starts to bless you, because he is, I need you to testify about it. Your goodness. All right. Understand this. This is not about you. It's about God because you're exalting God and someone needs to hear that. And then they always testify about it. Don't you look. Don't you hold it back. If they say, man, how did that happen, man? But God, I'm going to tell you. I just started trusting God, started being a faithful giver in my tithes and offering, man, and, and organizing and being a good steward. And, man, when I say God, open the door. All right. So I need y'all to take them seven eye wheels, write them down, put them on your little, little sticky pads. Y'all going to have all kind of church stuff around your little desk. Put on that little sticky pad and stick it down there and you speak that over your life. But remember this, we're all excited, all emotional right now, but you got to stick to what God is calling us to do as our tithes and all. Do y'all hear me? All right. Go back to your seat. Remain standing. Let me do this because I forgot it last week because I'll be all just caught up in this. Look, if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a if you don't have a church home, listen to me. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that you need to be in a place where you're connected and you're growing spiritually. I'm speaking to you right now. I want you to come down. If that's you, I need you to come down in the name of Jesus. All the others, we're closing out. All the others, come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, 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 listen. Check this out. You know, I just thank God, and if you're streaming with us, you watch this, the recording, I'm talking to you, there's a little link that's going to go down. You can click, and we want you to be part of the Fellowship Christian Center Church. If I'm speaking to you, you can come down at this time. If you're a little shy, it's all right. You can go to the Connect Center, fill out the card, and just tell them I want to be a, a member of the church, and boom, you're, you're connected, and you're on that list for the day. In the name of Jesus. So if that's you, we, we want to make it as easy as possible in the name of Jesus. Let me give my folk. Where's, where's my God? Can't work today. Daniel's family, right? Did I get it right? Did I say it right? Daniel's family. So check this out. We praise God for the Daniel family. Hey, look, let me tell you, let me tell you something. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. day before yesterday, I believe it was. Then last week, God put y'all in my spirit. I think I asked a couple people, have you seen my folk? I talked to Tasha about them. And just the other day, God put you in my spirit again. And then when I see you here, watch this. Because there's something I've been praying to God about. About ministry and membership and all that. So when you walk here and you walk up there, that's just confirmation. God says, Stafford, I got you. Now, uh, I'm excited. Did, did you graduate this year? You did. All right, we're going to honor you right now. Come here. What's your first name, Miss Jane? Ashlyn, that's right, Ashlyn, right? So we praise God for Ashlyn Daniels, a 2023 graduate. And not only is Ashlyn just a sweet young lady, but God has gifted her with a voice of an angel. Please believe you me. Oh, yeah. So thank you. We praise God for you. Thank you. And her son had to work today. That's my God. I'm so excited, excited about your family. 
the name of Jesus. You got me to the best. Praise God. All right, y'all. Look, check this out. I want you to have an amazing, amazing, amazing week, all right? If, if, if you are interested in being a leader in Fellowship Christian Center Church, because one of, one of my mottos is we build leaders. If you're interested in being a leader in Fellowship Christian Center Church or what, whatever we teach in leadership, it's always the first win- two Wednesdays in a month. So this is the second Wednesday of that, that two Wednesday. So if you want to come and just kind of check it out, all right, uh, that's really for leaders. But if you're interested in being a leader, I just want you to see uh, some of the things that I teach and, and, and how that flows and what this church is about as it relates to our leadership. Because the leadership, anything that happens, any problem that you have is always a leadership issue. All right. So I just believe that. So uh, God impressed that on my heart. If that's what you, if you want to do that Wednesday at 715. The last two Wednesdays of the month, listen to me, you, you guys. The last two Wednesdays of the month, it's always Bible study, okay? I need to see you. Especially if you're inquiring about this church and whether this is a good church for you and you're praying about it. You need to come see what the, the dude is teaching on Bible study night. What is he about? You understand? The last two Wednesdays. Is the banner? No, yeah. I try to give him a key clue, but they didn't put the banner up. The last two Wednesdays of the month, all right? So we want you to participate in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Uh, Brother Philan, bless you, man. Good to see you back. Uh, Look, have an amazing week, okay? Tell somebody about F3C. We don't have our be our guest cards. We ran out. I thought we were having a day, but we don't have them. Uh, but we'll be passing those out every Sunday, every Wednesday, make, asking you to hand them out and invite people to church, all right? God bless you, first-time business. We love you. We thank you for your presence in the name of Jesus. So after I get a benediction, I come down to the front all the time, and I shake everybody's hand. So I want you, if you want to come down, please come introduce yourself personally, especially all my special guests from the radio, all right? God bless you. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Eternal God, we thank you for what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for your hand being on us. Thank you for your promises. And God, we ask you just to forgive us always of all of our sins and our iniquities, God. For we realize, God, that we are just sinners saved by the grace. There's nothing special about us. But there's everything special about you and Je- through Jesus Christ. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And, God, as we depart this place, never from your mercy, never from your grace. God, continue to govern our thoughts, order our steps, and direct our path. Helping us to be more effective kingdom builders. Now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, Sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest rule and abide in each and every one of our hearts and forth now and forevermore. Everyone in the building, repeat after me. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. That's what the word amen really means, okay? That's why I say it all the time. God bless you. Go in peace. Come shake my hand.
I hopped on a team. Uh, we ran it up when I let go of me. We ran it up when I let go of me. What's the point of the story? If I try to tell it, get to the end, really regret it. Walk in the heaven, look back and forget it. Stay in the spirit. I'm trying to walk with a different appearance. Look at it past like a past interference. In a way, me and Caleb just dropped out the NBA. But it keep coming back, talking any day. Take a look at your wallet, disintegrate. Got the faith that the size of a penny, yeah. I say this for the ones for the NBS ever. Don't be surprised if they get safe. Hear the hope in these lines, what the spirits say. But it's feel like deliverance. He for the folks on the crap pipe, trying everything. Get uh, ready for war. We on holy ground. Pick up your sword. Who you looking to? I look to the Lord. Everybody know we rock to the court. Hold up. Uh, I was in the witch trying to be the poster. Why well, I never saw the brick, but I got closer to the Lord since times on the bus just rose. I was in the cut on the ground just posted. Uh, I had a dream to go to the league. I had a dream to go to the moon. With the rock in my hand, I'm doing my dance, I'm making the fool. Draft day, pull up, shoot it up till they call my name. Fam sitting courtside, the arena full. Each and every ball game. Whoa. God had another plan for me. So many times you called, but I wasn't answering. Cause I ain't wanna switch my goals up. 